Hi again everyone, it's Pastor John here at Napanee Baptist Church. This is Wednesday, May the 19th, and uh, we're having beautiful weather here in southern Ontario, Canada, and uh, I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're keeping safe and trusting the Lord through this pandemic. And we are getting some good news as far as the future is concerned, as far as this current lockdown is concerned. And it's looking now like it's going to be two weeks from now, uh, June 2nd, Wednesday, June 2nd, that uh, things are going to be opening up. So uh, keep looking to our God, keep trusting Him through it all. And what we are doing this week is going through a little series in the book of John in our Bibles, and that's what we've been doing throughout uh, these times where we've had the visits with the pastor. We just get together and we read a portion of scripture, and I pray and comment a little bit, and then we commit our day to the Lord. So if you can turn in your Bibles to John chapter 20, John chapter 20, and we're going to start with verse 1 and read down to verse 18. So let's read together. John chapter 20, verse 1. This is the account of the resurrection and the empty tomb. It says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Verse 3, so Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Verse 8, finally the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Verse 9, they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Then verse 11, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. Verse 14, At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Verse 17, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and say to my brothers, and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them they had said that he had said these things to her. Well, this is quite the account here of the resurrection, and uh, I really like what it says in verse 9, what John, the writer, says about the disciples, Peter, and the uh, other disciple who went with him. It says they did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They still didn't understand uh, and at this point and they were obsessed with or not obsessed I guess it would be more um, 
weighed down by their uh, fears and by their discouragement, thinking that all was lost, thinking that Jesus had been crucified and he was dead and gone. And this was such a shock. Uh, and it's so interesting that it was Mary Magdalene who first went to the tomb and the, saw the saw the stone that had been removed. And she was the one, uh, a woman of ill repute, uh, she saw the empty tomb and then she went back to tell Peter and the other disciple. And then if you look over at the uh, section here where it talks about Jesus interacting with Mary and he asks her in verse 15, why are you crying? And then he says her name. And this is so, uh, so important because Mary knew him and he knew her. So it wasn't a phantom. Jesus wasn't a ghost or a disembodied spirit. He, he recognized her and she recognized him. And that's such an encouragement for us when we think about that simple truth that Jesus knows my name. He knows me intimately. He cares about me intimately. And especially when it comes to knowing him the way Mary knew him. We can know him in that same way, in that same personal way. And we, of course, can have that same hope of the resurrection, that we can have a personal relationship with Jesus and know him intimately and personally. What a great hope to have, to have a risen Lord, a risen Savior, not some dead leader of a dead religious movement. No, we have a risen Lord. And that's why Mary and the disciples were beside themselves. They just couldn't get over it. And we should be the same way. That truth should just continue to astound us and amaze us that Jesus knows our name. He is alive and well, and he knows us, and he cares about us, and he wants us to come to him. May that encourage you today. May you be emboldened and encouraged with that wonderful hope that Jesus is alive, and he knows us, and he cares about us. He knows what we're going through. He knows our name. And may God bless you today, and may you be encouraged, and may you keep looking to the risen Lord. Let's just pray together and commit our day to him. Father, once again, we just praise you and thank you that you are a prayer-answering God. You are a God who cares. You are a God who is always there, who is available, who is ever-present. And Lord, we thank you that we have the hope. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have the hope of the resurrection. And we have that assurance that you know us intimately. Jesus knew Mary. He knew her by name. That wonderful old hymn, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Jesus knows me personally, and he cares whatever I'm going through. What a wonderful assurance and, and promise. Lord, I pray that you bless each person watching today. Bless our church family. We're having our Bible study this afternoon. Bless that, I pray. Bless our prayer meeting and bless uh, those who are coming out and those who can't make it. I pray that you would be with them and encourage their hearts and we're just hoping and praying that in a couple of weeks we'll be able to gather as a united church family. And we are just really excited about that. So Lord, we just want to commit ourselves to you now. And we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, in our risen Lord's name, amen and amen. God bless. Have a great day. And we'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.